Over the last few years, Peugeot, or Peugeot, depending on how you want to pronounce it, have been on an absolute roll. Their cars have gone from being good to great, and one of the best examples of this has been the Peugeot 308. So it only makes sense to bring out something that's a little bit bigger than the 308, but smaller than the 3008. And Q, it's the Peugeot 408. Now, it does resemble in many ways the 308, the interior, which is a great thing. This bonnet here is almost identical. In fact, it might actually be identical. And in terms of prices, well, it starts at just, and I mean just under 40,000 euros. This one is the GT and it's about 44, 45K. And if you go for a plug-in hybrid, it can be almost 50K. However, we'll be talking about engines in a short while. But when I first picked this up, I kind of scratched my head and I said, what, what is it? Is it an estate? Is it an SUV? Because there's a lot of space under the wheels here and this black trim definitely gives it an idea that it might be an SUV, but then at the same time, it's quite long. So I'm gonna show you some cinematics and then please comment below and let me know, do you think it's an SUV? Is it an estate or is it just a massive hatchback? Honestly, I'm baffled as to what segment to really put it into. In fact, the only car I can perfectly compare it to is the Citroen C5X. Now, we're gonna begin with the boot because this is kind of the most interesting part for a lot of people looking at a car like this. And it is vastly bigger than an ordinary hatchback. So in terms of boot size and leaderage, which is a confusing thing, if you go for the petrol version, it's 536 liters. If you go for the plug-in hybrid, it's 471, both of which way bigger than the hatchback and kind of in that SUV territory. Now in here, it's actually quite a nice boot. There's a little bit of storage under here. There's a tire repair kit, so no spare wheel, but I suppose that will do. But the highlight for me is just folding the rear seat. You just pull that lever and the seat just shoots down. Really, really handy. And then this being the GT, it comes with an electric tailgate too, which is just a nice little addition. In the rear, there's actually pretty decent knee room and headroom is okay. However, you do notice that sloping rear roof line. There's a lovely armrest here with two drink holders, two USB-C charging points, and then the ice fix points are hidden away here behind these zips nice and neatly. In here, it's very like the Peugeot 308, and that is a brilliant thing. The seats are comfortable, the layout is fantastic, and you definitely feel like you're in a cockpit. For me, I really love that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connects up automatically and really, really quickly on this 10-inch display here. Now, I could run you through this, however, my top tip there is just go down to your local dealer and get them to kind of teach you how it works because it is a little bit different, especially if you're coming from maybe a German car, for example. Then in front of you here, you've got a 10 inch screen as well. And this is 3D, which is absolutely mental when you actually look at it. But again, you get used to it. So it has two different effects. You can customize it to have your maps or to have some driving info, whatever you like. On the steering wheel, I suppose this is a bit Marmite because it's a little bit like an F1 steering wheel but it is brilliant. Over on the left-hand side, you've got your cruise control, your DAP cruise control, all those things. And then on the right-hand side, everything to do with your music, your volume, change the track. It's all very intuitive and it's a lovely place to be, but I suppose the next best thing is to go for a drive. So to drive the 408, the gearbox is the beginning of this because I believe it's only available in a fully automatic version. There's no manual. And although some people might not be too much of a fan of that, actually it's a good thing. They're more efficient, they're smoother, and in stop-start traffic, they are the best way. They're the only way, in fact. Then, in terms of engines, so there is a few different engines, which we'll talk about in a while, but this is a three-cylinder petrol engine. And at low speeds, actually, it's a little bit kind of, I don't know if the word rough is right, but it almost sounds a little bit like a diesel, but that's always the case with three cylinders. However, it's actually a peach of an engine. It's got a good bit of poke in it. When you put your foot down, it does pick up quite quickly. It's also quite efficient on the motorway. Around town, it's actually really good to live with. It absorbs bumps very fluidly and really, really well, but it's the turning circle that's absolutely excellent. It just means parking is really easy and actually there's a lovely camera system which is great and 
that leads me quite well into the driving aid. So for example, if you're reversing out of your driveway, it will actually beep if there's some cross traffic coming, which is just a nice little addition. And those simmer through into things like adaptive cruise control. It does have lane assist too. Now it won't keep you centered in a lane, but it will stop you if you get distracted or sleepy for whatever reason. It will keep you from veering out of a lane, which is quite good. It's unintrusive, which I quite like. And just as a whole, it's quite nice to drive. I'm a fan of the steering wheel. I know not everyone is, but it makes it feel a little bit sporty. And that's something I definitely want to bring up because I suppose the best car to compare this to is the Citroen C5X. And the Citroen is known for having that hydraulic cushioning suspension, which is superb. And whilst this doesn't have that, it's still very smooth. However, it is ever so slightly more engaging to drive on a twisty road. You don't miss that suspension, but it certainly isn't as smooth as the C5X. But I actually think this maybe looks better, so it's a bit of a trade-off for which you prefer. In terms of engines, currently right now on the Irish market, there's three available options, but there will hopefully be a fourth coming soon. So the entry level is a 1.2 liter petrol engine. It's a three cylinder. It's called the PureTech 130. Any guesses for how much power it has? Uh, then on top of that, there's actually two hybrid versions. So the first is about 5,000 euros more, and that's the hybrid 180. And that comes with a 12.4 kilowatt hour battery. And actually the EV range alone is 63 kilometers WLTP, which is quite impressive. Then there's also the hybrid 225, which has the same EV range, same size battery, and that's an extra 3K on top of the hybrid 180. And then trim levels, I suppose, is also one thing we should touch on. The base trim is the Allure, then there's the Allure Pack, and then there's this, the GT. The difference between the Allure and the GT is about 5,000 euros. So you can see, you can quickly find yourselves in the mid 50s when specking up a 408. Overall, the 408, it's really nice to drive. I certainly think that for someone who's maybe not interested in a full-blown SUV, this could be something worth considering. It's very comfortable. Which engine do you go for? That kind of depends on you and your circumstances. I definitely think if you don't have a home charger or you don't have off-street parking, don't even bother with the hybrid because that's really how you'll make use of that. It's up to you which engine. I think the fully electric could be quite an interesting one. But anyway, for now, that's it for this review. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please make sure to subscribe. Let us know what cars you'd like to see in the near future. We'll see you in the next one.